When I was just three years old, my mother left my father for another man. I don't remember much from that time, just a vague sense of tension and sadness in our home. My father tried his best to raise me alone, but I know it must have been difficult. When I turned 23, my dad sat me down and told me he was getting remarried to a woman named Catherine. She's a wonderful woman, son. I think she'll be a great stepmom for you, he said with a smile. When I first met Catherine, I was struck by how beautiful she was. With her cascading chestnut hair, deep green eyes, and flawless porcelain skin, she seemed to glow from within. Her beauty was more than just physical though she carried herself with an elegance and grace that I found utterly charming. I could tell my father was as smitten by her looks as I was. She was 27, in the prime of her beauty and vivacity. The first year with Catherine was pleasantly uneventful. She was friendly and tried to bond with me, though I kept her at a distance, unsure if I wanted to get attached. Then one fateful night changed everything. Catherine entered my room wearing a slinky negligee that showed off her shapely figure. Her breasts strained against the silky fabric, and her long, smooth legs seemed to go on for miles. She exuded a raw sensuality that awakened things inside me no woman had before. Come join me, John, she purred, giving me a smoldering look that left little to the imagination. Entranced by her beauty and confident sexuality, I was unable to resist her advances. We began a torrid sexual relationship behind my father's back. Catherine had awakened a hunger in me I didn't know existed. After several months, she proposed we run away together. In my young lust-filled state, I agreed. We eloped and moved to a new city where no one knew us. For three passionate years we carried on as a couple. But slowly, guilt began seeping in about what we had done to my father. I also started to see that Catherine didn't really love me. She just enjoyed manipulating people and breaking taboos. One day I'd had enough. Catherine, this has to end. What we did was wrong. I need to go back and make amends with my father. I told her. Catherine flew into a rage. You ungrateful brat. After all I've done for you. But I stood firm. The next day, while she was at work, I packed my bags and left for good. When I arrived back at my childhood home, I found the house abandoned, the doors locked and yard overgrown. I asked a neighbor what had happened. Oh, John, it's terrible. After you left, your poor father was overwhelmed with grief. He became a shut-in, refused to talk to anyone. We tried to check on him, but he wouldn't answer. He died all alone in that house six months ago, the neighbor explained sadly. I was crushed with guilt. If only I hadn't run off with Catherine, I could have been there for my dad. Now he was gone, and it was too late to tell him how sorry I was. I had chosen a woman over my own family, and it had destroyed us. I broke down, weeping for the relationship with my father that I had foolishly sacrificed forever all for my own reckless desires. It was a hard lesson about regret, but one I would never forget.